Years ago, there was a home in Porter County's Edgewater Beach, Indiana, farther east than all the rest and farther north than most of them too. There's nothing left of it today that I can see anyway. It was built on a sand dune and however it looked with a house on it, today it's a fairly natural looking dune with just a little bit of dune vegetation on it in Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. I haven't researched enough to tell whether it was in the first subdivision first planted over there in 1888 as Vinland or one of the others, such as Calumet Edition to East Chicago. I don't know how far back this cottage dated or have any image of the place. Nobody is living in Edgewater today and most of the old homes have been removed, though a handful remain and signs of others are easy enough to spot. Some of Edgewater's roads even still exist, but you can no longer drive to where we're talking about. What would a drive to Edgewater's northeasternmost home have been like back when you still could drive to it? And that's what this video is to give you some idea of as you sit there at your computer. Of course, it is not the same with none of those old houses lining the south side of Oak Avenue along here, whether or not its name changed as platted to Indiana Street after passing into Herndon's Lakefront and none of the intersecting roads over to the other homes on the dunes to the north or the south remain paved either. You're of course not getting any of the feeling of being in the bustling little community of Edgewater in its ghost town state like this without even another soul to be seen around you. What is the story on how they were able to connect up the old subdivision of Lakefront's unbuilt Indiana Street with Miller's Oak Avenue when Edgewater Beach was platted 39 years after some of the others, even though you're crossing a 600 foot wide parcel of land which remained privately owned and undeveloped, as the other properties around it were developed. But that's the sort of question which this little video is not going to answer for you. Nor whether each of these subdivisions were land scams has been claimed, or I think more likely, the effort simply wasn't taken to build most of the 50 roads platted up and down steep sand dunes, and so most of the 1,500 lots never had homes built on them. People thinking in terms of the flat expanses of Chicago, or even Valparaiso, simply cannot comprehend that living on the Indiana dunes is not the same thing. Are there old home movies shot by the residents of Edgewater? Good question. There could even be some of driving around in here half a century ago. Surely Edgewaterites took lots of snapshots showing Edgewater in its glory days, but we'll never see them. Portage's Historical Society had no interest in the history of Edgewater any more than the city of Portage had any interest in this area, except to stop it from incorporating as an independent town on its own before being made part of Portage. Portagens can't understand living in the sand dunes. Portage leveled off all of its dunes before covering itself with flat developments reached by flat roads. Portage's idea of what to do with the Indiana dunes is to replace them with steel mills. And exactly what was the condition of this road to the east even before Hill Drive's pavement to the south was torn up? I'm afraid I don't remember but I don't even know why it even existed except to access this one home. It sort of looks like just a jeep trail over the sand mined area, except it's gravel covered even past the access to the house and jeep buffs wouldn't have done that to it. Here you leave the road to head north. There's an old railroad tie to stabilize the route up the slope and a couple dollops of concrete, apparently where they parked.
Somewhere up here was the house, but I'm afraid I can't say exactly where. And those trees over to the northwest are almost all that's left of the cluster of homes which once stood in the northeast corner of the subdivision of Herndon's Lakefront. Maybe we'll drive over there next time. He had a great view of Lake Michigan in this great location for a house. Although I'm sure there are plenty of people who would find living on a sand dune like this to be terrifying. 